one interface that's used quite often is the Java comparable interface. The Java comparable interface allows us to compare two objects. So the comparable interface consists of a single method called compare to that takes one parameter and returns an integer. So the return value of the compare to is an int, and we're going to use that to determine the ordering of the items we're comparing. And the parameter O is what we're comparing to. Now you'll notice that the type of O is T. T is a generic type. We'll talk about those in a later video, but for now, just know that that really can be any type. What we pass into compare to is going to depend on the class we're implementing. And so we don't want to specify a specific type just yet. And that'll all make sense in a later video. For now, just remember that that's a generic type. We'll talk about those later. And when we see actually how to implement those, you'll see where that type comes into play. So to call compare to, we're going to say object one dot compare to, and then pass object two to that parameter. So we're comparing object one to object two. Now the return value of this method call will be positive if object one is greater than object two, zero if the objects are equal, and negative if object one is less than object two. Now, why is that? Because that's the standard. That's the convention for how we expect compare to to work. When we're implementing compare to, we need to keep that convention in mind. It's up to the programmer to decide how they're going to actually produce that value. And there's sometimes more than one way to do that. And we'll see some examples. So for strings, we're going to compare the strings character by character, ignoring case. And that's already built into Java. So we don't have to worry about implementing that. We just need to know that when we compare two strings, that's how that comparison works. Now, suppose we are writing a date class. Well, we can compare dates by year and then break ties with month and then day. Movies are a little more interesting because we could compare movies by title. We could compare them by release date, or we can compare them by rating. We could also compare them by length or any other attribute that, that movies have. Now, which one should we use? Well, it just depends on what we're trying to do in that particular application. There's not one way that's always correct. You as the programmer have to decide, how do I want my compare to to work? How am I going to want to compare two movie objects together? And that will lead you to which attribute you decide to base the comparison on. Now with compare to, keep in mind, you can only compare one way. You can compare multiple fields in case of ties, but ultimately there's one method to do a comparison. Suppose we want to compare songs. We could compare songs by artist and then break the ties with the title of the song. We could compare by title and then break ties with the release date, or we could compare by the number of plays. A lot of apps will let you do that. You can sort the songs by the number of plays. Again, there's multiple options available to you, and it's up to you to decide which is best for what you're trying to accomplish with your program. So let's see a different example. Here we have a person class, and this is incomplete. We're going to assume that the constructors and other methods are there, but notice there is a name and a year field in this class, and the class implements comparable, and notice in brackets we have person because we're going to compare one person to another person. Again, this is a generic type. We'll talk about those in a future video. For now, just know that whatever type we're comparing, we put that in the brackets there. And then here's our method. We're overriding it because it's part of the comparable interface, and it's going to take a person as a parameter. We call that parameter O. Again, the name here is, is up to you. You can use anything you want. So what do we put in here? Well, if we want to compare two person objects by their name, that's actually pretty straightforward. Name is a string. It has a compare to. So we'll actually call the compare to on the name of this. That's the object that's being called on and passing as a parameter to that compare to the name from the parameter object. So we're comparing this to O this name compared to O's name. We could also compare by birth year, and this is a little more complicated. So there's three cases. The first case, if this is year is less than O's year, we're going to return negative one because this is less than O when we compare them by their years. If this is year is greater than O's year, we're gonna return one because person this is greater than person O. And otherwise the years must be the same so we'll return equal, indicating the two persons we're comparing are equal. Now, there is a way to do that in a simpler way. We don't have to just return negative one or one. We can return any value. So another way we can do this is subtract O's year from this is year. And notice that will be positive if this is year is greater. It will be negative if O's year is greater. And it will be zero if they're equal. 
So again, there's nothing magical about a compare to. We're just trying to generate a negative, zero, or positive value depending on how the two objects relate. And this is one way to do that. And so we don't need to have the if else structure. We can just do something straightforward like this. So hopefully this gives you some ideas for how compare to works and why we have it. Again, keep in mind, there's nothing magical about compare to. When you're writing a compare to, you just have to think of how you want the two objects to relate to each other and then figure out how to generate a positive zero or negative value based on the result of that comparison.